Summer 1947, somewhere outside of Roswell, New Mexico. A rancher named W.W. Mac Brazel and his son Vernon are driving on their land about 80 miles outside of town when they come across a collection of unusual debris. Officials from a nearby army base claim that the strips of rubber, tin, and paper are the remains of a crashed weather balloon, but the idea soon spreads that the material was actually evidence of a UFO that had crashed to Earth. The Roswell incident is still one of the most famous alien conspiracy theories out there, but it's actually just part of a long historical relationship between alien conspiracies, warfare, and the fear of foreign invasion. This relationship shows up in our literature and popular culture from the end of the 19th century through World Wars I and II right up to today. So the history of alien conspiracies can teach us a lot about the modern legacy of warfare, globalization, distrust of the government, and paranoia about protecting borders from foreign invaders. The public fascination with the idea of life on other planets, little green men, and shady government cover-ups actually stretches way back before 1947 New Mexico. You can actually see it as early as the late 19th century in the genre of fiction called invasion literature. Works in this genre, which really caught on in England, usually depicted Great Britain getting stormed by hostile neighboring countries, primarily France and Germany. So not Mars or whatever planet the guys from Independence Day and Men in Black are supposed to be from. But even though the fears found in invasion literature were expressed in fiction, they were grounded in some very real historical precedents from decades earlier and the Napoleonic Wars. In 1785, French pilots, I guess you'd call them pilots, crossed the English Channel via hot air balloon into Britain. And soon came the growing worries among the British that new technologies would leave them susceptible to aerial attacks. Invasion novels often drew on real advances in military technology like submarines, chemical agents like anthrax, or hot air balloons to tell stories about hostile governments or terroristic mad scientists that use these tools to hold the world hostage. From the 1870s to the onset of World War I, the fear of war becoming more lethal often found its way into the popular imagination of England. Invasion lit is largely thought to have kicked off with a novella by George Tompkins Chesney called The Battle of Dorking, reminiscences of a volunteer in 1871 which tells the story of a successful foreign invasion in England. But the genre had its first major foray into outer space with H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds in 1897. Wells's novel is considered by many to be the crux of two important genres, invasion literature and science fiction. It tells the story of aliens with superior weaponry coming to Earth and creating fatal chaos until they're ultimately stopped by the deadliest weapon of all a tiny germ. But Wells and other writers of invasion literature were reflecting very real concerns that were also showing up in the headlines of the day. Concerns that weapons were becoming more lethal and that neighboring countries could be drawn into ongoing conflict by hostile governments. And with the beginning of World War I, these fears materialized in reality and not just in fiction. In 1914, World War I spread across the globe with the assassination of the Archduke Ferdinand. The conflict continued until 1918. But in addition to the sheer scope and devastation of the conflict, the First World War also introduced new forms of military technology. We see the widespread introduction of things like armored tanks, airplanes and aerial bombings, chemical weapons, submarines and machine guns. And around the same time, battlefield photography was coming into its own, producing images that spread around the world. These images of war machines and human devastation become especially significant as the war came to a close. And by this time, the genre of invasion fantasy and literature had started to wane in popularity because the fears that had been articulated there had already been realized. There was no need for fantasy anymore. But what does this have to do with alien invaders? Well, when you think about it, some of the imagery of sci-fi and alien conspiracies borrows heavily from images captured on the battlefields of World War I. Aliens attacking from flying machines, protective gear that resembled gas masks, lasers that could fire multiple rounds like machine guns. In the years between the wars, these became a greater part of the cultural imagination. And as countries around the world began to rebuild, aliens started to rear their little green heads once again in a mix of reality and urban myth. In 1938, Orson Welles decided to put on a broadcast of War of the Worlds. As part of that retelling, 
telling, Wells had the radio announcer for Columbia Broadcasting Systems interrupt the news to declare that Martians had invaded New Jersey. But today it's debatable how seriously people took this stunt and how much chaos actually followed. Some sources, like WNYC's Radio Lab, state that the panic was widespread, with as many as one in 12 listeners believing the hoax was real. But reporters at Slate note that the panic may have been overhyped, since of the 5,000 people polled by the CE Hooper rating service on the night of the broadcast, only about 2% said they were listening to Wells' broadcast. Instead, Slate posits that the reports of mass hysteria that are now associated with that broadcast could have been promoted by print newspapers, which viewed radio as their primary competition. But regardless of the fallout from Wells' War of the Worlds broadcast, the uncertainty in and of itself is illuminating. Because if one in 12 people really sprinted from their homes into the streets after the broadcast, or if millions of people who didn't even hear the broadcast believed the news that they read in the paper, either way it was because the fear of attack was a present fear that was animated by the shadows of World War I. It also marked one of the first major alien conspiracy theories that combined fiction with reality reality, or rather fiction becoming reality. Because the idea of aerial attack was a reality. Hostile foreign soldiers crossing country borders was a reality. And in 1938, the terror of alien hysteria was about to escalate once again as the world crept closer to World War II. The warfare technology that developed in World War II resembled some of that introduced in World War I, namely chemical agents, gas masks, aerial bombardment, and the invasion of other nations. But along with this, the world was also reckoning with the systematic killings of the Holocaust and the dropping of the first atomic bombs in Japan by the US in 1945. The use of nuclear bombs brought new waves of terror about the advancement of military technology in the post-war era. The decimation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki brought about waves of fear that, for the first time in military history, we had the ability to not only wipe out soldiers and civilians caught on the front lines, but to drive humanity into extinction. As a result, the fears stirred up by earlier wars of invasion, bombardment, and superior technologies were now amplified in the aftermath of World War II. But atomic bombs didn't only usher in public fear of military technology. They also brought with them fierce international rivalries between various countries looking to gain access to these new weapons, which brings our timeline right back around to Roswell in 1947. The whole conspiracy that arose from the Roswell crash marked an important point in the alien frenzy timeline, because of it's one of the first instances where distrust of the government becomes wedded to the public's fears and theories about aliens. It wasn't until the 1990s that the Air Force finally came forward and clarified that the debris found near Roswell was actually part of a US espionage program called Project Mogul. The program designed, tested, and flew giant high-tech weather balloons equipped with sensors that could pick up reverberations of atomic tests around the world. Couple that cover-up with the secrecy surrounding the Manhattan Project and so many other World War II initiatives, and suddenly we start to see a growing suspicion held by many that government officials have something to hide. The common logic among the alien conspiracy faithful went, if the government can lie about so much, then why wouldn't they lie about aliens? This line of reasoning seems far-fetched to those who might not believe that a few pieces of paper and tin foil in New Mexico means that there's a larger plot afoot. But keep in mind that the suspicions weren't only about what was found in Roswell, but also what was being tested out in the Southwest. After all, the secret government program known as the Manhattan Project, which led to the invention of the atomic bomb, was working in Los Alamos, New Mexico. And the first successful test of the weapon on July 16th, 1945, took place at the Trinity site in Southern New Mexico whole lot of New Mexico. So people who were swept up in the alien mania of Roswell were rightfully suspicious that government bases had something to hide from the public because they had been hiding something from the public for years. And of course, soon after this came the space race between the US and the Soviet Union, in which the Cold War rivals turned their attention from domination on the ground to domination in space. With the launching of Sputnik 1 in 1957, the Soviet Union sent the first successful object into Earth's orbit, followed by the US's Explorer 1 in 1957. 1958. And as stories about space dominated the headlines, so did more earthbound conflicts between the two adversaries, including the construction of the Berlin Wall in 1961 and the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. So conflict over space domination and earthly efforts to build military superpowers were at the forefront of the public's mind. And while satellites and astronauts began to circle the globe, so too did stories of alien sightings and government cover-ups. This includes reported sightings in Tehran in 1976, Rendlesham Forest in the UK in 1980, and Belgium in 1989. Although in each of these cases, government officials were asked to investigate and found no evidence of aliens 
Or did they? I'm just kidding, they didn't find aliens. But the human imagination is an incredibly powerful and adaptable engine of theories, from the plausible to the more far-fetched. And in times of earthly crisis, when things like war, government secrecy, and the threat of invasion have weighed heavy on the public imagination, it seems that the threat of extraterrestrials can feel increasingly real. So what do you think? Have anything else to add? Want to argue passionately with an anonymous stranger in the comments section about why every alien conspiracy theory has some merit? Because I know there'll be probably more than one of you out there. Drop all those comments, questions, conspiracies down below, point us to your favorite piece of nerdy sci-fi, subscribe to Origin on YouTube, and follow us on Facebook, and I'll see you guys back here next week.